Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to day four. Somebody go ahead and just look in your hands. And I want you to say what Brother Thrillo is teaching us to say. The future work of the kingdom of God lies in the hands of the man, lies in the hands of the woman who discovers the answer to the question, what must we do that we might work the works of God. I'm excited to go straight into the message today. Maybe the most important thing you will hear in this school of ministry, God is not depending on anything that you possess, that we have nothing in and of ourselves, but that we receive it from God. So if you are ready to receive an impartation, to receive a download, to receive a word from God, a new anointing, I want you to join me in thanking God for his servant one more time as we welcome Dr. Morris Cirillo. The theme of our teaching for the next several sessions here is the big question that we started yesterday morning. It's on a banner over the front of this platform. What must we do that we might work the works of God? We are not interested in slogans. Neither are we interested in questions for questions' sake. But that question was given to Brother Cirillo by God. God brought us here to the school of ministry for a divine purpose. He made to us a threefold prophetic promise. One, he told us that our lives would never be the same. Two, that when we left this school of ministry, we would know how to work the works of God. And three, that God would give us a life-changing experience. And that experience would manifest the power and the faith of Almighty God. Remember, the only teacher that we have here is not more Cyril but it's the Holy Spirit. He's our teacher. We haven't come here to sit at the feet of a man, but we've come here to sit at the feet of the Holy Spirit. We are going to go to our scripture text where this big question is found. John 6, 28. This question was asked of Jesus after he performed one of the greatest miracles in his entire ministry. He fed 5,000 men plus women and children on a hillside from a little boy's lunch, five barley loaves and two small fishes. And after this great miracle, Jesus departed out of the midst A storm came on 
the sea, Jesus walked on the water, got in the boat with his disciples. The boat was placed to the other side. Supernatural miracle. And when the boat came to the other shore and they got out of the boat, those followers of Jesus asked him this question. They said to him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? I want you to look at your hands once again. We are doing this as little children in this school. God told us, except we become as little children, we'll not enter the kingdom of God. Just a little simple act to bring about a very dynamic spiritual challenge. Look at your hands. And while you look at them, let the Holy Spirit take these words and impregnate, impregnate them very deep within your spirit. The future success, don't look at Brother Sir. Don't look at me. The future success of the kingdom of God and the work of God will lie in the hands of those that find the answer to this question. What must we do that we might work the works of God. What must we do? Let's go now to the events that surround the asking of this question and let God give us the answer. Remember that prophecy that God has given to us. Before we leave this school, we will know how to work the works of God. The sixth chapter of John and the very first few verses, let's begin to investigate the events that surround the miracle which led to the asking of the question. After these things, reading from John 6, 1, after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. <laughs> and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased. Now, I want to pause here for a moment and ask us this question. Why did this great multitude follow Jesus? The Bible tells us why. Because they saw, not because they heard about a doctrine, not because someone 
came out of a Bible school or a theological seminary and brought them a doctrine of healing or the power of positive thinking. But they had seen with their eyes the miracles that Jesus did on them that were diseased. Now, as you keep that in your spirit and in your mind, let us draw back on all the things that God has been speaking to us in this school about passing head knowledge and going into the arena of experience. They ran after him because they saw his miracles. Now, I find it very beautiful that Jesus did not rebuke them. Now, what are we trying to produce here in this school? And what Ingredients are necessary for power. What kind of inputs? Positive. Say it. Say it again. Say it again. All right. Here's one of those negative inputs. How many times do we have to go to church and how much do we have to listen to miracles and healing and supernaturalism being downgraded? Now, you and I this morning have got to come to a very important, serious order of priorities. Jesus did not rebuke these people who came running after him because they saw the miracles. He didn't say, oh, go home because all you want is for me to feed you. He didn't say, go home because all you want is to see the blind, see the deaf, hear the lame walk. Go home. Get out of here. You're nothing but carnal people. All you want is loaves and fishes. He never rebuked them. Why, Brother Shrillo? I'll tell you why. Because he came here for this purpose. First John 3, 8. Listen to what it says. For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Listen to Luke 4, 18. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath the anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of the sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Jesus said, I came here for this purpose. Don't send them away. Bring them to me. Matthew 8, 16 and 17. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. 
that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bare our diseases. He came here for this purpose. Now, you and I have got to establish before we go one step further into what must we do that we might work the works of God, we have got to establish an order of priority. Is the healing ministry, is the ministry of the supernatural, is the ministry of the miraculous, is it a carnal, surface, loaves and fishes ministry, or is it the true, loving ministry of Jesus Christ? What is it? Probably one of the most important statements that I could ever share with you is this. Man has nothing in himself but that he receives it from above. We struggle for God's power. And perhaps today, more than any time in the history of the church, is there a struggle in the lives of ministers, and there's a struggle in the lives of what we call Christian workers, but which you and I from now on will always go by the fact that we are ministers of God. And that struggle is, Brother Srello, what is faith? I've heard so much, I've been taught so much. Faith seems to be such an elusive spiritual how do I receive it? How do I know I have it? How does it work? I want the Holy Spirit, who is the only teacher here, to take us into a new spiritual dimension, a new understanding of this marvelous, wonderful, supernatural manifestation. Faith. There is a definite difference in the fundamentals of believing power and faith power. To exercise and to demonstrate believing power, you and I can do this as a result of our natural being.
You can set your mind to believing. It's the product of your will power which you possess, which God gave to you and to me. This is why we have so many successful people in the world who know nothing about faith but know an awful lot about the power of believing. Like the power of positive thinking. And many of these other natural forces that we have within ourselves whereby we can set ourselves in the direction of a strong good attitude. The natural man has that ability. But the natural man does not have the ability to exercise this beautiful, majestic, spiritual, or spiritual characteristic called faith. Now, God never intended his people to ever struggle for faith. Faith is not the product of man. Faith is not the result of the natural man or any of his abilities whatsoever. When God created man and he placed him in the garden. He gave him five natural senses. God gave him the ability to touch. God gave him the ability to taste. Those are senses. God gave him the ability for sight. God gave him the ability to hear. And God gave him the ability to smell. For some reason, when God created man, these were the senses that man needed to live. Five natural senses. God never gave Adam and Eve the characteristic or the quality or the sense of faith. They did not have it. And do you know why God did not give it to them? Because they didn't need it. You see, God would come out of the heavens. Why did they need faith? Adam was created with all power and all dominion. He spoke. Whatever he spoke happened. He had full control over the animals. He named them. God came out of heaven and would sit with him 
And there would be a relationship and Adam and the Lord would sup together and Adam would worship him and God and Adam just would have a good time together. Amen. Didn't need faith. Now somebody said, Brother Shula, haven't you ever read in Romans where it says that to every man it has been given a measure of faith? How many of you ever read that in the scripture? Well, please go read the first verse, the second verse, and the third verse, and the fourth verse. Read it all together. It says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. And it's not written to unbelievers, it's written to believers. I beseech you by the mercies of God that you do what? That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable. <laughs> What's reasonable about that? Giving everything to God. Nevertheless, God said it's your reasonable service. And then God says, accordingly as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. He's not talking about God just dishing this out to everybody who's walking down the street corner. Faith is not a natural life force. Man was not born with it. He was born with five natural senses. Touch, taste, see, hear, smell. And the Bible says that man was created in the image of God. Now the only thing that you and I have that resembles God at all is not in our outward physical appearance. When the Bible says that we are created in the image of God, it simply means that God's image is in our spirit. It's inside us. It's not in our physical bodies at all. Now, what's inside you that's just like God? What's in your spirit that's like God? That's exactly right. When God created us, he didn't make us puppets. There are no strings on Mars and there were no strings on Adam. In other words, God's not up there saying with a string, raise your right hand. Raise your left leg. You know, like a little puppet. You know, how many of you seen those puppets, you know? See, God didn't make us like that. God gave us a free Moral will. Adam had it. That's what Adam used. In disobedience against God. In the garden. That's what brought sin and sickness and death into this world. Because Adam took this will that God gave him. And Adam used it against God. He disobeyed him. How many of you know that we are saved by faith? Let me see your hand. Come on, wave it at me. Well, we're going to take care of that right now. You say, Brother Sul, aren't we saved by faith? Of course not. But you say the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, by grace are you saved by faith. But brother, how can you be saved by something that you don't possess? The natural man does not possess the quality of faith. Don't you tell me that every drunken sinner and homosexual an immoral person walking down the street has this 
characteristic of faith inside them? Faith is not a natural life force. Faith is not a natural life force. Faith is not a natural life force. Every one of them walking down the street have got authority over their will. Every one of them walking down the street can exercise the natural senses, sight, tasting, seeing, hearing, smelling. Let's not take the scripture out of its context now. Let's read it all together, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. By grace are you saved through faith, but not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works. Shall we continue to read? Not of works. Why? Lest any man should boast. We'd have a lot of people going around this world thinking they saved themselves. But God took care of that brother because he only gave us the ability to do one thing, and that is this. The Spirit of God has been moving over this meeting, over this lesson. It's been like warm liquid fire here this morning, but God cannot break you. God cannot cause you to yield. God cannot cause you to surrender. You've got to do it. There is no way that you could ever convince me that an individual has the ability to be able to reach up and comprehend and grasp God. God is super natural. Hmm. Do you know what the word God means? The word God literally means in the literal translation one that must be worshipped as having supernatural ability. Pastors, you know what you do? When you go back to your church Sunday or when you get back from this meeting, this school, you know what you do? Hang a sign over the entrance of your church over the entrance of people where they come into your auditorium. God is one that must be worshipped as having supernatural ability. If we don't understand that, we have no reason for our existence. We might as well be another Gleek Club. Qantas, Elks, Moose. Because otherwise we are just coming into a church and going through a form and a ritual. We just got another psychological club going on. But what makes us different is the fact that the God that we come in these doors to worship is not just a form and not just a ritual and it's not just some other philosophical philosophy, but our God is supernatural. He is one that demands. He demands we recognize that he is supernatural. He demands it. Ninety percent of the people who get saved really can't explain to you what's happening. 
Well, look back to your own experience. All you knew was that something inside of you was moving. You wanted to give your life to God. The Spirit of God either convicted you of your sins or of something. And you said, oh God, I'll surrender. I'll give you my life. You came to the altar or somebody witnessed. You didn't know. You didn't understand what it was all about. But brother, when you got up, you knew something happened to you. Come on. You knew something happened. Your life was changed. What did you have the power to do? You had the power to surrender. That's all. Why? Because God can't force you. God can't take you by the back of the neck and he can't drag you to the altar. He can send the spirit to come upon you and to speak to you, but he cannot force you. He cannot override your will. And do you know what basically salvation is? I'll tell you what salvation is. Salvation is this. In the Garden of Eden, man used his will in disobedience against God. At salvation, man takes his will, which is in direct disobedience to God because it is under the curse of sin. Man takes that will and he surrenders it back to God. Amen. Amen. And it's no more I that lives, but it's Christ who we allow inside of us to come and live his life and his will and his works through us. You're not going to ever struggle again for faith. When you come to the cross, and you surrender your will to God. By grace are you saved through faith. And not that of yourselves. When you come to the foot of the cross. And you surrender up your will and your life to Jesus Christ. At that moment, brother, up here, something happens. God imparts and impregnates into your being. What? By grace are you saved through faith, but not that of yourself. Man has nothing in himself, but that he receives it from above. At that moment, brother, God imparts, God impregnates you with what? With what? With what? With what? Whose faith is it? Whose? Whose? Well, somebody that is receiving something from above, shout amen. Don, what an encouraging word today. Man does not have anything that God wants to use within himself, except he receive it from above. Yes, and we may have heard that scripture of John 3, 27, a hundred times, but I guarantee when it comes forth again from the lips of Dr. Cirillo, mm. and Greg, you personally also often emphasize that God has not come to put people under stress, right. under a, a list of obligations, even if they promise to read the Bible every day and right. they get in fascinated with one chapter, you don't want them worried that they must yes. do X amount of chapters. So this, in this context, we receive nothing except it's given from above. 
And yet Dr. Srollo has very masterfully also done a couple of things very quickly. He has dismantled the lie of the devil that tries to dummy down the significance of miracles, to trivialize so them, to or to turn them in, to use philosophy and psychology to make them symbolic, to make them like Aesop's fables or just stories. And he's put us right with that group of people asking the question, and then he's revealed, which I never heard anyone else do, where that question came from. Mm -hmm. They didn't just come up and spontaneously, but I quote Dr. Cirillo, he said, this question, John 6, 28, what must we do that we might work the works of God, was asked of Jesus after he performed one of the greatest miracles of his entire ministry, right. feeding the 5,000. So just as we are saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves, in other words, uh, that even the faith is a deposit from God. Mm. Everything that is being presented to you through this proof producer's impartation is coming to you from the throne of God, not as a list of things that you're going to have to fulfill uh, in your own strength. And that's where the humility is going to come also. Romans 12, three, you will not be able to think of yourself more highly than you should, but you will know that God is the one that dealt that uh, measure of man. faith into your life. So great. I mean, and what I like about those school of ministry, it's like the Christian life. This Christian life is a spiritual journey. And those school of ministry are also a spiritual journey. Man has nothing in himself, but that he received from above. And what do we receive from above? We receive our supernatural life force which is faith. But now, that's why that school is so important. And it's not just about listening to one video. It's even not about listening to one entire course. It is a school. That's why I keep on encouraging you. Be focused as you are. Be serious as you are. And attend each one of the 10 course because you are in a spiritual journey and your life will never, never, ever be the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, Mark, I want you to pray for our, our viewers, our students here in just a minute because now we're just past the halfway point in Proof Producers, day five, day six, and then the incredible anointing impartation service on day seven. I want to encourage you, if you have not taken advantage yet, be sure this is really the heartbeat of Morris Cirillo. I mean, I could just feel his heart beating as I hold this book in my hand. This is the answer to the question, what must I do that I might work the works of God? And I love this note from Brother Cirillo. You're seeing it again. I shared with you yesterday. God bless you, anoint you, and use you for his Glory, that is what the heartbeat of Morris Cirillo is all about. That's what this school of ministry is all about. Just before Mark prays, one of my favorite scriptures that really Brother Cirillo reminded me of today when he talked about how that God isn't depending on anything we possess is when Jesus was facing the Pharisees and he asked them about John the Baptist. And I love his question because it's a question that you and I can ask ourselves, And he said, tell me, was the authority of John the Baptist merely human or was it from heaven? And I want us to know something today. We are not called to produce the proof with our own strength. We are not called to be what God has called us to be in our own strength, but the sooner we recognize what Brother Srillo is telling us today, that our authority comes from a much higher place than our mind. It wasn't your pastor who called you into the ministry. It wasn't your husband, your wife, your good friend, whoever it might have been that God used to lead you to salvation. I want you to know you didn't choose him, but God chose you. Somebody say, I am chosen. And so you can know 
that your authority is not from yourself or somebody else, but you are under the authority of heaven. Mark, I want you just to go yes, ahead and pray in the mighty kapotet. Father, Kara we give you praise. We worship you, Father, because we know that there is an anointing available now to experience a new dimension of power, Father. And yes, Father, we pray for that anointing to be released upon the life of our brothers and sisters. And Father, today we pray for those who are still hesitating, asking themselves if it's for them or not for them. Father, help them to establish an order of priority. Yes. Reveal them, Father, that healing and deliverance and miracle is coming from a loving God, a loving Father, and that it is His plan for their life to be a witness of the power of God in their generation. Yes, Father, I pray for that supernatural life force to be be revealed, to be released, to grow. And Father, as for us, Father, the very first day in our life, we dare to lay hand on the sick and to take authority in the name of Jesus. Father, let that boldness be released in their life. Let that anointing be released in their life right now. In the beautiful name of Jesus, and we give you praise. Amen. Amen and amen. And amen. And amen. Well, we just want you to know how much we love you today, how proud we are, and really, it's the honor of our life for God to connect the ministry of Mara Cirillo to your life to your family, to your ministry, right where you are. Receive one of the most precious notes, and I wanna go off today, and I wanna thank missionary Lawrence Lemuria, who is part of this School of Ministry from Nairobi, Kenya. This blessed our hearts today. We read this before we came on Facebook, and I love what Lawrence says, and we love to hear from you, and we don't think there's anything greater we could hear than what Lawrence is saying. And he said this, he said, Dear team, thank you for the invitation and scholarship for the Morris Cirillo Virtual School of Ministry. I love to be a part of it and everything that Dr. Cirillo is. This is what he said, when the day that Brother Cirillo passed away in July, 2020, I called my children and my wife and I announced that our spiritual Papa in the faith has gone to be with the Lord. He said, we cried and worshiped God for offering to us a man who loved us Africans so sincerely. And Brother Srilo loved the African people. The thing is, he also loved the Asian people and he loved the European people and the Spanish people. He had a heart for the world, but a great love for the African people. And he said this, this is what Lawrence said. He said, I prayed that day almost like Elisha and Elijah. I prayed that day that the same anointing on his life would come upon my life and that I could be the Morris Cirillo of my town and my village and preach Jesus Christ to the world. And then he just went on to say how every time he connects with the School of Ministry on Facebook, he's so uplifted and strengthened and he just wanted to tell the team and he wanted to tell David and Teresa, all of our television team, how appreciative he is for the impartation and the strengthening that he is receiving. Listen, we never get tired of hearing from you and how God is using your life. God is going to use your life in a greater way than maybe ever before because he's not looking for something that you possess, but he is trying to download something to us. He's trying to help us to understand what already has been downloaded inside of us. And God is gonna activate you in a new dimension of power and a new dimension of ministry as you stay connected. You're gonna receive like Don, like Mark, like I have received through this incredible privilege of being connected to the life and to the anointing. Morris Cirillo, I say to so many people, his life, his voice, 
His anointing is maybe greater now than it ever was before. When Jesus left, he said, greater works shall you do because I go to the Father. So I just declare that your best is yet to come. Stay connected. Your double portion is here. We'll see you tomorrow, day five. The incredible, life-changing Morris Cirillo, Proof Producers School of Ministry.